Hello, everyone. So my name is Hua Zhou. I'm an associate professor in biostatistics at UCLA. Uh, I just want to spend a couple minutes talking about the Open Mendel project, what it, what it is, Open Mendel project, and why do we want to do this. So uh, the motivation, uh, Really, it's about uh, uh, being more efficient doing genetic analysis. So this is a typical uh, workflow of, uh, of today's genetists. So from the point the data is generated from machine to publication, getting scientific uh, finding, uh, usually there is a very long pipeline. And genetists have to deal with uh, probably up to a dozen software. You know. Uh, when, the, when the data is coming from machine, you need to do genotype call, SNP call, sequence alignment. So you need to, do, you need to learn to use this software, GATK. And then uh, uh, you get the SNP data. Basically, this SNP is the same as the SNP Kevin was just talking about. Uh, it's a jargon for, for today's genetic data. So, so after you get a SNP call, you need to you know, manipulate that data file, the binary data file Kevin was talking about. So you need to learn to use a software called Plink. And then after that, you know, always there are missing data from machine, right? You want to impute those genotypes. So there's a bunch of softwares you have to learn, depending on, I mean, they have slightly different operating characteristics. You have to choose the right one, impute your genotype data. So these are the software, I mean, popular software people are using. And after that, uh, geneticists want to know, say you have a trait, say height, you know, how much variability in the height is due to genetics. That's something called heritability analysis. So they want to use software called GCTA or Mendel. Uh, uh, and then you do want to do association tests. That's what Kevin was talking about. You want to do a genome-wide association test. There are some softwares there. You have to you know, read all those manual, choose the one which you think that fits to your data, and, and, and try to learn how to use those software. And, and, and uh, uh, in contrast to the association test, uh, like before, I mean, before associating tests, the mainstream is to linkage analysis. And again, it's the same situation. You have to choose a software, learn to how to use it, okay? Uh, uh, so, so, so this is a typical workflow. And, and of course, you need some glue code. And currently, most people are using Python or, or, or R to, to glue this uh, uh, analysis together, okay? And as you can see, it's kind of painful, right? You have to learn to use a lot of software. And if your lab is just doing data analysis, probably that's fine. Once you set up the pipeline, probably you can reuse that pipeline I mean, to change the results you know, uh, uh, back and forth between software. But as a de method developer, say you are a statistical geneticist, you want to develop some new method, like Kevin was going to you know, propose a new statistical method for doing GWAS, it's very painful. I mean, even you just want to do a minor tweak of the one step on the analysis. Uh, um, and, and most of these software were, uh, are written in C or C++ or Fortran. So Mendel software is in Fortran. And uh, you know, I mean, dig into those code and you just make minor tweaks. It's almost impossible for, for like PhD students. I mean, <laughs> for that time span, it's very, very hard, okay? So that's the current situation. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the dream world, uh, uh, we hope there's a, there's a unifying environment we can, we can you know, uh, uh, do almost all, and probably not all of those tasks in previous slide, but like 90% of them. It's if it's in the same language, and, and it's very easy to glue all those steps together. And most important, uh, uh, as a massive developer, it's, it's almost trivial to, to you know, develop new things, okay? So if there's such environment, then we can do better uh, uh, massive development and force scientific collaboration between labs and, and also encourage reputable research. And, uh, it, and, and it seems to us, uh, uh, Julia seems, uh, it seems the right tool, I mean, <laughs> to, to, to do this. I mean, that's the, that's the fundamental uh, uh, idea about this uh, uh, Mendel uh, open Mendel project. We, we hope we can, we can try to you know, provide such an environment so people can you know, uh, do almost all the analysis in previous slide uh, in, in this environment, fixed environment. And, and it's very easy for, for, and it's open source and the, you know, the community can try to add their new methods and so on. So that's the fundamental idea. So uh, why, why do we 
call this project open window. Uh, that's because, I mean, if you, you look at the, this pipeline, you can see there is a software called Mendel. It, it's, it, it can do a lot of things, you know, it occupies a spot in, in various steps in this pipeline. And, and this software, Mendel, uh, was developed by uh, Professor Ken Lin. And actually, Ken, was, uh, uh, Ken is uh, Kevin's uh, advisor, and Kevin mentioned Ken in, in his acknowledgement. So this, this program, Mendel, was created by Ken Lin uh, almost 25 years ago. So it has a long history. Uh, uh, the current version is version 14.3. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's written in Fortran. Now it has like, uh, I don't know, 75,000 lines of Fortran code. And myself started working on Mendel uh, uh, a couple years ago when I was a postdoc at UCLA. Uh, uh, so the software, uh, it's not totally open source. It's free. I mean, you, you just Google UCLA Mendels and you, you get to the software package. You can download it and run it. You don't have to pay for it. But it's not totally open source. It's kind of closed source. Uh, we just distribute executable, OK? Uh, 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 but, but now, I mean, we have the idea probably it's time to bring this open source, uh, but we don't want to uh, continue the Fortran development because I mean, young people, they just don't do Fortran anymore. <laughs> and, and, and Julia seems it's a much, much better design uh, language than Fortran I mean, in terms of I mean, putting these things out. Okay, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so this is what current Mendel can do. Uh, it does, it's not meant to, for you to read, but it just shows currently it can do a lot of things like 29 options. They span different areas of genetics you know, population analysis, pedigree analysis, G was, uh, uh, Kevin was talking about. Uh, it, it's one, one, one thing it can do, but it can do a lot more than that. So, um, so, so basically the idea is, uh, uh, the open Mendel, my idea is, uh, we have a huge uh, code base in Mendel. Uh, probably that's a good starting point to, to, you know, to, to form this community. So just, you know, keep, but I mean, redesign the interface of all those analysis options and, and put, put that totally open source on GitHub. And, and, and that's, uh, that's the main idea of the Open Mendel project. Uh, so uh, uh, currently, it's, it's led by a group of researchers at UCLA. I mean, it's, it, this idea was conceived by Ken Lan, but uh, we have a couple of researchers from uh, human genetics, bioinformatics, and uh, uh, biostatistics and the computer science who are participating, researchers, students, and so on. Okay, so, uh, so that's the main idea of, of Open Mendel. And actually we have a, a, a kickstart workshop at Stanford this summer. So uh, that's uh, probably that's the most important part. Uh, uh, so uh, as this workshop is uh, 22nd, I mean it's joined by UCLA and Stanford. It's in the August. And you can see there are two parts of the workshop. The first part is, uh, more on using, I mean, teaching how to use the traditional, I mean, the, the current Mendel, the fortune-based Mendel, how to use that executable, how do you do one of those 29 analysis options. Uh, but what I want to advertise here is the second part, is a programming workshop. It's, a, it's the last two days of this workshop. The second part is really about open Mendel. So, so far we have about uh, tens of thousands of lines uh, Julia code. Uh, but, still, um, but they are all in private repository right now. Uh, during this workshop, uh, we really want to uh, want help from the Julia community. So how to better put these things out, keep this open source, and help the community to grow. So that's the idea of the second part of the workshop, the programming workshop. And, and, and it's totally free. Uh, so, if I, I, so if any of you who, of course, you guys are very good at uh, Julia programming. If you have any interest to, to do um, I mean, I mean software development for statistical genetics or even just the intent to learn about it, uh, definitely uh, you should uh, either you know, talk to me during this conference or go to the website, just register. It's totally free, the, the programming workshop. And also we have some funds for supporting travel. Just feel free to talk to me or, or just Google uh, UCLA uh, genetics, I mean, statistical genetics short course. There's, there's a link to register and so on. You just input your information and so on. So that's August uh, 25th to 26th. Uh, that's uh, probably the most important thing I want to say here. 
uh, we, we, we are actively seeking uh, uh, help and, uh, and support from the junior community to, to let us know uh, is there any better way to organize this uh, project. So uh, that's all I have now. Uh, and I, I'm happy to take questions if there are any.